We always say cars end up in museums, but not the buildings they came from. We're here to show you what used to be the Bahari Racing Building where Michael Waltrip, Johnny Benson, and Derek Cope raced out of, among other people. Well, this is the, the one they call Rambo. Whenever I said that we wanted to come here, every single person I asked said, you need to find Rambo. First race shop in this park, 1989. And everybody thought that Chuck Ryder was crazy for building such a big shop, believe it or not. Yeah, I was thinking like, this is like a mega shop for 1989. You think about like what Stavolas were operating out of back then. This really hasn't changed that much. Everything looks just about the same. Ginger used to sit back there, Chuck, Chuck Ryder's daughter, and she was a always a pleasure and always smiling always laughing in here they had carpet they didn't have epoxy floors the hallways everything is exactly like it was with the offices there we had a gym down there on the end upstairs same thing chuck's office if you came up here were you in trouble yeah you're in trouble if you come up here of course Lorenz harry was his partner that's where the horror comes from bahari was dick bear Low and Terry and Chuck Ryder. So it's Bahari. That's how they come up with it. Upstairs is also an apartment where the uh, truck driver, when we was here, truck driver, Tommy Rigsby, oh, uh, hot rod. Did you ever pass out up here? Maybe a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> was there a gift shop in here or something? It looked pretty big just to be No, a... not really. It, the trinkets and trash deal with t-shirts and hats and stuff wasn't really that big back then. That's the door that we actually came in. We parked on that side and come in there, which at the time that I come here, I was the jack man and a fabricator, which we'll go into the fab shop. But when you come in here, this was this was um, the assembly shop right here. This is stayed the same. Same with the windows, um, the high ceiling. Which when we come in here at first, and and I'll tell you later about the shop we come from. But it, it was nothing. This this is unbelievable. We're like, look at this place. I mean, it was. Uh, it was definitely, definitely a beautiful place. We, this is um, nice now. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. But um, I mean, like when it was brand new, they painted the floors red and I think they um, hired the lowest bidder because when we moved in here, the floor came up, the paint. You could put your foot on it and spin it and the paint would just come off. <laughs> and then you'd be around the cars and you, your uniforms turned red from the paint. And then we ended up getting that fixed. If you want to walk in here at the fab shop, and I know there's a lot of stuff in here, but that's the door that went up to, to the apartment. The apartment's up there. And this all was a fab shop, including the, the parts room up there. This is where it changes a little bit. <clears throat> the big door wasn't there. And this come around this come around to about right here was about it. And the reason why I know that is because my toolbox sat there, my welding bench was there, and my welder sat right here. And from here, that way, was the fab shop, which was um, way bigger than what we had and definitely roomier. And we had, you know, all the equipment and everything. Carrie worked in here, Mike Fox, Zoomer was in here. And this is where we spent most of our time. Like I said, I was I was right here around this corner and then there was a wall there. This is where we put them together, where we built them, did all the fab work. And then... Uh, Where'd the chassis come from? The chassis back then, you would get a, a Hutch chassis, um, a Banjo chassis, a Hopkins chassis. You had the chassis builders that you would buy the chassis. Very few people were messing with uh, making their own chassis, building their own chassis. This was actually really nice because we could line the cars up. We'd have all the cars lined up there. We had a surface plate right there. Man, is it hot in here? <laughs> it's hot in here. Hang on a minute. Oh, he came prepared. <laughs> you had me fooled. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Epic. Wow. That I think it cool. shrunk when it was hanging in the closet. <laughs> but anyway. Pretty nice little touch, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, how about that? So anyway, uh, we had the surface plate here, and then this was our assembly shop. We had tables along the walls, because I actually come here when it was actually Pennzoil. I was a fabricator, and then I was a mechanic. I was over there, I did all the front suspension and everything. I worked up against that wall there. But we had assembly rooms in here that are still here, where we would put our components together 
and then the storage room. What were these rooms? Do you remember what they were for component wise? Yeah, we had, we built rear end housings. And at one time we had a um, blind guy who had all these cool tools that made noises and he was, would build our rear ends. Can't remember oh, his name. Cool. You had a blind guy building yeah. rear ends. Yes. Like when he would set the brakes on it, he had his, his calipers would talk to him. I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> But we do the rear ends, front suspension, cleaning room, and uh, then we would have a storage room. Well, it really blows my mind about this place, and I'm friends with Kelvin, and I've been here, in here a bunch of times. This is where the building ended. This overhang was open. So from here, straight across, that way, it was all open. And you could come out here. We had a um, wash pit right there. We put a brick wall up, and that's where our pressure washer was. We had a lift in there, and that's where we washed the cars. But this was open. This was all open, and that was it for, for Bahari Racing. That was as big as the building was. Hmm. Then this building has got built on to, I don't know, four or five times, because there's a body shop that holds tractor trailers on the other side of that wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's huge. It's... um definitely really uh really big but this was a shop and i remember we couldn't have been here i don't know we'd probably here two weeks and they had gutters that come down here and our truck driver was in the little parts s10 he backed up and mashed the gutter <laughs> and that was like the first scratch we put on the shop and uh i'd laugh about that that was pretty funny but yeah this was this was just an overhang and uh it's been built on and built on and built on on the other side of that wall, changed so much that I can't even figure it out. But that's where our motor shop was. We were doing our own motors. Last time I was over there with Kelvin, I got lost and I had to ask a couple questions because I wasn't sure. Where is this picture taken? Is that on the overhang? In here or these ones? Yeah, that would have to be out there after they build on. Is them pendulum cars, right? Yeah. Yeah. This wall, I know for sure was here, because I at one time had the table there, and this was the is motor that the, shop. Is that leftover red floor, or did somebody else paint it red again? They might have painted it, I guarantee you that didn't left over, because <laughs> <laughs> the, the, when they first painted it red, it was, it was horrible, it just all come up. But this was, um, this was the, the, the engine room, and Mark Cronquist was in here. Later on, Ron Purrier was in here for the Pennzoil days. But um, it was just full machines and looked like a motor shop. And it wasn't, it wasn't really that big for a motor shop, but it pretty much looks the same. I'm not sure about that, if they might've put that up there or not. We had dyno cells and of course you have clean rooms and you have, you know, different stuff for the motor, for the motor shop. If you, you know, been through a motor shop, you know, they got all kinds of stuff different rooms and stuff but yeah the dinos were in the back see i don't think i don't think this was here i think i still remember it being open these rooms right here look like they may have been added on as dino rooms because they got the little window and it was like yeah, some holes were been. patched up where they had maybe had a controls that went through it yeah sure enough that could have been I don't know how many iterations this place went through between 89 and it's hard to, yeah when. <laughs> it's hard to tell it's definitely hard to tell. The doors definitely were not there. We didn't have big doors, they were just man doors. What a funny, seems to me like, maybe that's it, there was a door. This is the door that we come through all the time. I don't know where it's gonna take us. Like I told you last time I was here at Kelvin, I got lost. <laughs> well, we ain't going there. <laughs> this right here would make you feel like you're at home. Like I've been here, I know this, I remember the cars, I remember the people. Remember set up plate, I remember all that stuff right here. We really didn't mess in the motor room that much. They rolled the motors out, we put them in, in here. And, but uh, this right here, just like being here in 89, it really hasn't changed as far as the same feel in the same space. You, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I can see from the like, pictures, it really, even the stripe, like it was just yellow stripe yeah. instead of blue. It, yeah, everything looks kind of like vinyl too. I, I wonder if the yellow is still under it. Yeah, sand the wall down, it might still be yellow. It could be. What's up there? I have no idea. Now, I don't know if that's just open 
up there because he runs he runs these little cars. Hey man. Hey, hey what's up above here? Above here? Yeah, what's up there? Uh, it's old offices and stuff. Just offices? Yeah. Okay. But see this wasn't here. Well, <laughs> use the office anymore, it's just like storage space and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember this whole this whole building right here, this corner of this building right here, um, I don't remember it being here. It, it was, this was open. So I think that they come in and built that because we had we had our cars lined up on this wall. Huh. And then on that wall, and like I said, we had a surface plate right here. Are there any uh, funny stories about anything that come to mind, like somebody <laughs> messing something up or putting on backwards or? Well, the the uh, you know Tommy Hot Rod lived in the apartment. We were at Wilkesboro racing, and we're going to Road Atlanta to test. And uh, myself and one of the motor guys, Bob, we were going to take the S10 to the airport, and the S10 was in the back. And we had fence and a gate. When Tommy pulled out, he's gonna leave the gate open. And then we would pull out, cause we didn't have a key. We was gonna pull out and then lock the gate back. So me and Bob come here and, you know, early enough to get on the plane. We get ready to go, we're getting the stuff okay. And we come in here and go out back and the truck's sitting there. And we're like, now we're going to road Atlanta and we're getting on an airplane. So we're gonna be there in an hour. And the truck is sitting here. <laughs> so, so like, hell. Took off, went up, knocked on the door. Tommy, Tommy, get up. Oh, so he, he gets ready. <laughs> he gets ready and he goes and he hops in the truck and takes off. The funny part about it was, while we were doing that, we got a couple minutes late. So we pull up at the airport, we're walking through the door and they're like, hey, we gotta go. Y'all are late. And I said, let me tell you about late. Mm -hmm. I said, your truck <laughs> just left the shop. <laughs> no way, what happened? I said, I don't know what happened, but I'm telling you, your truck just left the shop. So we flew flew down there and went and had a sit down breakfast, which you never have. Had a sit down breakfast and still had to wait on the truck. <laughs> but it was, it was pretty funny because they were on us for being late to the airplane and the truck was still sitting at the shop. <laughs> funny that you work every day with these guys and now I can't remember their names. You know, I know Mike Fox because I've seen him before, but Kerry worked in there. I can't remember Kerry's last name. Zoomer, I don't even, you you could tell me his name and I wouldn't know it was Zoomer because that's what we called him, Zoomer. Just like there's a lot of people that don't know what my name is, they just call me Rambo. I couldn't get a real name for you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, if you just ask for Rambo, they'll know. They'll know who he yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's the way it is for a lot of people. And, but the shop that we come from, it was like three shops and the main shop was like a four bay building that was a little deeper than a normal garage you you know what i mean it was like it was a little deeper then on the other side there was another building there and that's what a fab shop was it wasn't made for race cars and then there was another one and in statesville it's it's still there the 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 four bay buildings tore down and the building where the fab shop was tore down but the back building is still there up hmm. in Statesville, just right there on 70, right before you get to the John Deere place on the right. So you go from that kind of like a regular garage to exactly the mega shop. Yeah, and we come to this, and at the time it was a it was a mega shop. It was it was definitely a showpiece, and they, you know they thought Chuck was crazy for building such a big place. And I had thought that at one time they were gonna Chuck and and Lowrance had a um, preferred power, I think is what it's called, and they was a distributor of Briggs and Stratton engines. And I thought that some of this shop was gonna be warehouse for that because it was so big. <laughs> but the way it's built, it don't tell you that because they built a motor room assembly and a fab shop. It don't say we was gonna make some warehouse space. We come from that little shop and we come down here and we fill it up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy how you, uh, you it's never know. never big just, enough. Yeah, it's never, it's never big enough. And it, Were you kind of like the envy of other guys in the garage? like? Oh, you get to work in the big fancy shop, or well, is there nah, any talk I mean, like that? Didn't really like that. I mean, it's nobody really cares when you get to the track. Nobody cares where you come from because Junior was whipping everybody's butt out of them buildings up there in Ingle Hollow, <laughs> and all that was was build this building. And well, I need more room, so I'll, I'll build another room, and I need more room, just like the Petties <laughs> did. If, if you know, you did the Petty stuff. That that shop there in, in the L shape, that was it. Where all of you worked at? 
Oh, I've been everywhere but the electric chair, seen anything but the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should find Kelvin and see what he knows about these additions and who put them on. I'm sure he's he's probably collected a good bit of information just yeah. by owning this place and people telling him about it. I think that he said that was Matt Kenseth's old Newell in there too. If this is not the first time you've watched one of our videos and you don't want to have to search to find the next one, if you click the subscribe button, it'll just show it to you when you open YouTube. That's all that does and it's free. If you already are subscribed and love these videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up when you watch them because it helps recommend it to other people. When I, when I left this place, this was just still an overhang. That's exactly right. So this turned to part of the fab shop here and paint shop because I didn't did not put the paint booth in. When I came here, this was, uh, Renzi was using this as the uh, part of the fab shop and paint shop. So they were handling all of that here. We would sand the floors or we would sand the walls and we would come back to red McDonald's and we would come back to the Viagra colors from Eel River and then we would go, uh, sand all the way down till we got to the Penzoar and then uh, country time. So The walls and where? Uh, in there? Yes. In here, so. That's funny, we just talked about that. Like, wonder if you could sand it down and find yellow. Oh, you can. You can find yellow in spots and everything, and it's really cool. You put up a picture the other day, and I was trying to look at that picture on Facebook and find where that spot is in this uh, building. So, is that the car that's in uh, the back? He just showed me that picture? Yeah. Is that the one you just showed me? So, this is where the transporters parked when it was just this overhang here, right? Because this room over here before this was added on was the paint room. It was not a paint uh, <laughs> booth. It wasn't a paint booth. They it just went in there and- room. Yeah. <laughs> when we purchased the building in 2011, Lowrance, he owned the building along with the estate of Chuck Ryder. So up until then, I had always heard of Chuck, Chuck Ryder had owned the race team, but Lowrance uh, was big huge distributor of Briggs and Stratton engine parts. So yeah. he was like the largest guy, I think in the country at that time, but he was kind of the money guy. They would come to him and they would need to build on and he would front the money for the race team to build on and then obviously we'd get paid back. But he was kind of like the silent partner, but he was the cash. Hmm. He was the, he was- uh, It always takes two different people. And Chuck yes. was Chuck was the guy that was at the track, shaking everybody's hand, make it happen, yeah. walking around with the suits on. And, and he was he was, he was was the go-getter and, and Lowrance was in the back, quiet guy. And um, I mean, he was, he was a pretty cool guy. And uh, like I said, he was he was the guy. There's always one guy that the buck stops there, and that was Low Rance. In 1989, they tell me, and there's a picture I've seen it somewhere right past my second driveway. Here was a cul-de-sac, and you probably remember that cul-de-sac. Yep. It actually stopped there, so the road came in here and stopped. This they, was the first race shop in this park. It was yes. I mean, before Penske, before Cranford, everybody, everybody. This was the yep. first race shop. So they, uh, he said, they, this is what they opened with is what they had up front. And then as they signed a new sponsor or they got a new deal, you can tell when a contract was up because when the contract was up and they got the new bonus money to keep the new contract in, they added on. <laughs> he said, Lawrence, he, he come back and he was talking to us when we were walking through to purchase it. He was telling us how it went and everything. I didn't know you were the owner right after them. Yes. I, I figured there'd be other people them. in there. No, he, uh, up until them, Eel River and uh, Renzi and all of them leased and, uh, and leased it from him. But yeah, we purchased it from the original guy who walked in and, and purchased it. Now I'm confused about Eel River. Eel River is over in Talbert Point. Eel River started with the Viagra car. They were the ones who I think brought the Viagra, because there's some Viagra, I don't know that it's here now because we've painted and done this and done that, but there's there were some. Okay, so they stickers. started here and built that shop. Correct. Before they just went out of business. That's right. Yeah. And that shop, was, <laughs> that shop back over there, the Air River shop, which is now Roush Yates, I believe. Right. Where they're doing their machining and stuff. That place was huge and nice, beautiful. So one of the things Lowrance told us when we were purchasing it and we were sitting down, he said that uh, they should have went downtown Charlotte and got a revolving door out of one of the huge hotels and put it up there because once they shut their race team down, that was basically what the race team looked like coming <laughs> in and out of the building. So, you know, 
obviously it served its purpose over time and uh the uh, but at the time you know when you look at those view windows in there this was it i mean it was a taj mahal in 1989 they have view windows so they had to forethought uh forethought in 1989 to have windows because they seen that uh folks would come off the interstate and look into the windows and want to see but y'all had a, a car up front because those double doors open yeah. and Laurent said and he and I asked him and he told me he said look we didn't have a show car back then that was a race car yeah. that was the race car that maybe it was going to run five weeks from now we'd roll it up there and then the week before we had to go run it we put it back here for this shop to be that in 1989 it was probably one of the what would be considered the Taj Mahal, and now, uh, you know, it's it's pushed off the shelf in this old body shop now, you know. <laughs> we fix a truck or two, but hey, uh, you know, we paint uh, some of the uh, NASCAR haulers in here, and but we'll walk down here where they uh, done pit stop practice. They had tires set in here. I probably got rid of at least 30, 40 sets of tires that was in here. I don't know who they were from. I didn't see any date codes, anything that I paid attention to. So you, you had came with artifacts then oh, too it came yeah. with artifacts absolutely right i mean that's the stuff we want to know about like the, the random things stuff on the walls the things evidence you find i mean you come in here and you see bobby hamilton jr so they came through here tires and pit stop equipment was in here had some airlines hanging out and they were well i was told they would come down through here because i moved three jersey barriers from along this wall over here that apparently they were jumping off of and that's what they used back then so they were jumping over and stuff for here don't you have a body shop to put trucks in uh a paint biggest shop? Yeah, yeah paint shop biggest shop yes. i've ever seen yes the biggest yes. body shop i've ever seen this is where the haulers and the buses was kept in the latter days of uh the race teams and everything this, so, was, a, this was a swamp when i was here <laughs> was a, a oh swamp. yeah this was there were snakes and everything else in here. This so now we going. just, uh, so this was a drive through bank. Come <laughs> off the highway and drive through. We set this up as a paint booth. And uh, now we paint some NASCAR haulers and stuff in here and do stuff. So, uh, but yeah, this is where the haulers were. In matter of fact, when we got here, there was a motor home kept here by one of the drivers. Uh, Lawrence was uh, renting it out and they were keeping it in here and it was plugged in and everything and they kept it in here for a week or two after we purchased it. Is it bad that it's almost kind of funny how this just keeps going and going? Like, oh, you think crazy? it stops here, yeah. but wait, there's more. There's yes. a lot more. I think this oh, is yeah. it, right? This is an outside. Th oh, and this is it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is when uh, I think Lawrence and uh, Chuck Ryder said, hell, we're out of real estate and out of money. Let's pack this ride up and go home. <laughs> yeah. I think Pennzoil was ready to move on, so uh, they... There they was nothing up. but a parking lot that was half as big as what the first area is. It was just yeah. a parking lot, and this was woods, just like Zed, the cul-de-sac down there at the end. I mean, it was... It has grown so much. It and it, I mean, Mooresville, when I moved to Mooresville, you couldn't get gas at exit 36. <laughs> you had to go to exit 28. Here's all new. This is a very strange little room here. Like, I don't know how it ended up to be this shape, but... This is very different. So I think they just had a corner and they didn't know what to do with it. So they just started adding garage doors and walls. And, uh, <laughs> the definition of like every shop back then. We wanted to do some racing. We started with a drag car and now we started with a couple of uh, prototype cars, MPO1s. We raced the WRL series with my son. And where my motorhome is parked, that was the engine shop because yeah. they had walls in there with like cubicles and they were like, uh hook assembly, that yeah, yeah. Assembly, assembly and then there's two dyno rooms over there i got one is uh, empty and the other one has air compressors in it now i'm gonna ask you something and you can plead the fifth or you can just turn around <laughs> and walk away I hate when this happens <laughs> did y'all really drink much country time and did you use penzoil absolutely okay absolutely been a couple race shops where i've changed barrels around a little bit i ain't gonna say <laughs> so uh but uh, yeah, we we did Pennzoil and and I told I told the story. And we were drinking country, country time. time, yeah. Good country time, a little bit of vodka is pretty good. That's what I was getting. Ready to say. <laughs> this this whole place is very modern, like with all the offices and yeah, and like, all this stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, but this, you can even come down here and look at the fab shop. I mean, this is really at its day and time. Oh, this was so this is like a whole fan viewing wall it here. Is. Yes, this is okay. a fan viewing yeah. wall here. That yes, makes sir. a lot this more sense. This was a gym. This was a gym right here. And then we had a locker room right yep, here. That's the bathroom and locker room, yep. Yeah. The okay. lockers were still in it. Really? They got showers and stuff. We took the lockers out. They had a bank of lockers in there. We yeah. took them out and they had showers and everything. I mean, in, in 1989, that was a big deal. I can't tell you if I've been up here in six months. <laughs> now, this is original steps, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Because we come up here at this truck and loader house. Yeah. See you later. So if you if you came up here, were you in trouble? Yeah, you were in trouble if you come up here. I don't think I've <laughs> so ever been up here. This was Chuck Ryder's office. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been up here. This was Chuck Ryder's office here because he wanted to be able to see out. And now this is just where we store stuff. But he had his own bathroom in here. So this is where you came to either hear something good or get yelled at. Or yeah. get something bad. <laughs> well. Looks yeah. like maybe the original blinds too. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm pretty damn sure yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah, that's a neat view. Think of a picture of all the cars lined up out there. Yeah, right. I mean, kind of reminds me of a car dealership office, exactly. the way it's sort of set up like that. The actual apartment, these were our offices here. Did we turn them into bedrooms when we stayed here? So, it's probably a trash room in here now. That was one uh, one part of the apartment. Oh my goodness, we got, I haven't been in here in a while. It's right here. This was, it was a little kitchenette just like this and a, a full this bathroom. Was this was it, right here, this was it. Yeah, this right here was it. This is what Tommy lived in. And Tommy was the truck driver? Yeah. Yeah, this this was it. That, that's all it was. So this is where you came in here and had to wake him up. Yeah, I had to wake Tommy, get up. Yep. But, so I guess it really hasn't changed. You just added some bedrooms. Right. Washer dryer. I don't know if there was a washer and dryer. Didn't you say Michael Walter lived in there for a while? I think I think he uh, would stay here from time to time when it was a uh, maybe a night out on the town or something. I've heard that uh, he stayed in here, <laughs> at least uh, from uh, Low Rats. <laughs> so, not sure who else might have showed up. <laughs> Rambo, did you ever stay up here? Uh, I've never, never. Did you ever pass out up here? Maybe a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, back then we used to just lay on the creepers or we had that rubber we would just lay on the safe surface plate so, so here's the thing we we have this conversation all the time and you know where things has progressed at right i mean here you go you came here as a mechanic you got your truck driver's license you started you learned how to drive a truck when we and let me tell you about that when we moved from up there to here we had a storage trailer box trailer hooked it to the truck went over to the dmv i was dating the girl, the tester at the DMV. We pulled up with that raggedy ass freaking <laughs> freight trailer. She walked out and she said, we ain't going nowhere. Walked in there, here's your CDL. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. And that's how, cause I went to go to, for the driving test. So we decided we'd do it when we was hauling one of the storage because up at the other shop, we had a bunch what of trailers. Where was the other shop? Where'd y'all move from? Statesville. This is where this sport has transitioned so much. It's, is you got a guy now who can hang a window and he's the best window installer in the world <laughs> but you hand him a crush panel and he looks at it like you just handed him a spaceship yeah. you know and that's the <laughs> thing that you guys back then you were over here uh, on assembly you drove the truck and oh yeah by the way we've got to go over here and weld a new front clip on i'll stay tonight and i'll help you hang it and i'll weld i mean oh yeah we don't have that today right and I mean, just think of the championships that was won with a crew chief out here pulling a camshaft out of an engine. I guarantee you right now, 30% yeah. of the uh, crew chiefs sitting on a box today has never held a camshaft, <laughs> let alone know how to install it. For those of you diehards that have made it this far, we got some bonus banter at the end for you. It's pretty funny. Uh, related to Lake Speed, actually. And 
Speaking of Lake, if you're wondering about his car, we are in the process of getting the car ready for the track. And we have shirts available for pre-order. Lake Speed shirts, you can find them at staplesandautoworks.com. Link is in the description. I did a lot of the design work on this one myself, actually. Not the car itself, but I did the contingency decals on it and all the graphics behind it with the name and stuff. And I kind of modeled it after a picture um, of Lake Jr. wearing one of his dad's shirts back in like 1986. And Shelby says, make sure you go to the channel page and check out the video feed just to make sure you didn't miss one because YouTube doesn't always tell you when we post something. Michael Walter punching the hell out of him through the window, remember? Oh, Lake Speed? Oh, yeah, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> because me me and Mike, or Mongo, had to push the car back with the fans. Boo! Boo! <laughs> I mean, Lake Speed was the preacher. You yeah. know, and Michael gets out and, and, and wraps him in the head twice I mean, <laughs> and walks off. And so we're out there pushing the car back with all the people yelling and screaming I mean, at us. It seems like the truck drivers is able to have a really long career because even a truck driver in their 60s can still handle the road. You know, it's a... Uh, Henry it's Benfield's a, still driving. Oh, hell, Henry Benfield, man. <laughs> he's pickled. Look, he's pickled anyway. Look, he yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you one more time here. We know a lot of you guys watching this used to work in nascar you're their crew member crew chief driver owner something like that we know you're watching probably should have done this a long time ago but if you just want to email me so i don't have to come find you to make a video that would make our life a lot easier and we'd be happy to get your story out there show some cool stuff you got left uh if you know of a specific building that you're fond of and you'd like to go back to let me know